Hey everyone, Leo with Dreaming Tree, and welcome to the assembly video for our Frosty Treat Box. Obviously, it would double as a gift box as well. It's a pretty good size. Uh, but this is the prototype here, as you can see. Very cute, even without being done up with pretty colors and such. Um, very similar to the witch, the scarecrow, and we also have a fairy. It was time to bring Frosty back to life. So we're gonna start off by putting his little hat together. And you're going to want to grab this piece. Obviously, one thing that you should probably do before you start the videos is just go through and fold everything uh, at the score marks, which I've already done. So what we're going to do, as you can see here, we've got a series of little teeth. And in order to shape this, we're going to take and glue these teeth to their little neighboring pieces here. And not a difficult process, but can get, uh, well, it's just repetitive. But this is where you get into that flow or that zone. We're going to start off by putting glue on the first tab all the way up at the top, nice and easy. And take that and align it with the neighboring piece. Now, this does taper a little bit. It's not a straight up and down. So it kind of um, kind of dips in a little bit and then comes back out. So be conscious of that as you're putting this together. And I was worried that this may happen. This is, a, this is a pearlescent paper that we picked up from 12 by 12 cardstock shop. And while it's beautiful, um, I can already tell that, well, it's not as porous as uh, your typical cardstock. And it is gonna take me a little bit longer to get this all glued into place because it looks like it's just not sticking as well so for the after you get that first tab in I put glue on the next three tabs there just so that I don't have to keep going back and forth I'm gonna feel this out and see how it goes that first tab is gonna be um, I think that was gonna take a little bit longer to set because of the little bit of tension that it's getting from that little curve uh, but it looks like the other ones are cooperating nicely. So I could probably next time do the remaining four tabs instead of just doing three, just to kind of expedite the process. Now, again, this is going to vary depending on what type of paper you're using. So always keep that in mind. Um, if you are building this out of a standard card stock, I don't think you're going to run into that problem. Uh, but everyone has all sorts of different papers. And it's just, you just need to kind of get a feel for what you're working with here. Okay, so I just put glue on that first tab on the next section. Make sure you get it nice and aligned and just press and hold. Be patient with this one again. It's our little anchor. Okay, be very gentle with it. And I'm going to come in here. I'm going to flip these tabs down a little bit so I can get my nozzle in there and apply my glue. And like I said, I'm going to do the next four tabs. And I'm using the tip of my glue nozzle to kind of spread that glue around. I don't want to try to jam my finger in there. Typically what I do is use my finger to spread that glue around. But in this case, since we're kind of working in a, a bit of a confined space, I'm just going to use my glue nozzle. And one other thing too, Try not to get, if you're using this type of paper that's reflective, um, be careful and try not to get glue on your fingers so that it doesn't end up on, their, on the surface there. Moving on to the next section, same thing. Glue on the first tab. Again, it's, it's got a little tiny bit of a curb. So just make sure you're getting that lined up as accurately as possible. And just hold it in place, be patient. Keep those fingers clean. And just keep on cruising here. It's pretty straightforward. We'll flip those tabs down. And again, it may help to just kind of move these out of the way. Because for now, 
things are rather roomy as far as getting our hand in there. But as we begin to close this up, it's going to get a little tighter. And that's okay. We've got methods to get this done no matter how tight that spot might be. Okay, there we go. So we'll really have half of it put together as far as the structure goes, and we're just gonna keep on moving here. So again, starting with the top tab, nice and thin. You don't need a lot of glue. If you are, if you're using cardstock and you're falling behind, um, use, try using a little bit less glue, thin it out as well. Okay, you should be able to, should be able to keep up with me here. If you're not, you notice that things are not sticking, then ease up on the glue. Just rein those reindeer in. Okay, so I'm doing the next four tabs here, nice and easy. Lining that up nicely. Uh, for this, I actually recommend, if you've already done it, well, I recommend it if you're using this type of paper, okay? Because I initially cut this uh, with the solid score lines, which we do include, and I did not like how the things, uh, well, the sections were just not lining up correctly. And you know, that's one thing that I've said it a million times and I kind of went against my advice. I, I like the solid score lines for envelopes and card bases, and occasionally, you know, this or that. I don't know why I did that. Um, again, first tab only. Line it up, press and hold. Make sure it's nice and lined up. Um, I like the solid score lines for envelopes and card bases, because it makes them look a lot nicer, and the folds are very simple. And when you're working with 3D projects like this, I would 100% of the time recommend that you use solid score lines. And not solid score lines, sorry, perforated. The regular perforated score lines that are in your, uh, in the SVG folder, not in the solid score line folder. Okay, so just moving my way down here. I did put glue on the remaining four tabs. And kind of wiping that glue off as I go in case if you do get a little bit that squirts out, just wipe it off with your finger. And again, try to keep your fingers clean if you're using any sort of reflective paper like this. Okay, so I've got two more sections to go. Not too bad. And uh, this project is really a very, very, one of those Zen projects where we're connecting a lot of little tabs and the rest of it is pretty much a cakewalk. So, and you know, this part's pretty easy. It's just repetitive. So it's one of those, it's, uh, it's a good little project. And I know Ron will yell at me for saying this, but I wouldn't watch TV while I do this, but I certainly do enjoy when I get a chance to do it. Obviously I, can't listen to like a podcast while I'm doing this because then you would hear the podcast. Um, but when I'm crafting for myself, I typically have some kind of a podcast going in the background. Um, and I, I can actually almost thrive on doing two things at once. Um, I don't know, my brain goes kind of haywire if I have to just do one thing at a time. I think that's why I like explaining what I'm doing. Okay, so here we are uh, almost closing it up. Still the same process, one more time. And uh, when, when we do close it up, it'll essentially be the same process again. But now this is where things are gonna get a little tight. So just do your best, very gently. Press that and hold that tab in place. Okay, make sure it's lined up properly. And I keep a little sponge, a wet sponge underneath my table so I can Occasionally, periodically, clean off my fingers so I don't get a bunch of glue caked on there, okay? Putting glue on the remaining four tabs now, nice and easy, very thin, and just press and hold that in place. 
Here's the next one. Yeah, I guess this, this paper is cooperating better than I thought it would, luckily, which is nice. Okay, there we go. Just going back up. Just make sure, and you can see from the inside how nice those tabs are sitting against the neighboring spots. Now, with this, um, you should probably be able to get your glue nozzle in there pretty safely, but if you want, there's always the painting method. You can grab a scrap piece of paper, throw a little bit of glue on the very end of it, and you can actually just kind of dab that glue right on there. And I'm just gonna do all the tabs. Okay, and let's get that lined up. I got some little glue bits on my finger there. Line that up and hold it. And this one, Actually, it's not that bad at all. And now, if you are using standard cardstock instead of this pearlescent, foily sort of paper, um, it's possible that when you, if you try to apply glue on all five tabs at the same time, uh, that paper might be absorbing it faster than, you know, and not give you enough time to actually go down and press these into place, which means you just have to reapply it. But there it is. Okay, so we have that. Okay, so before we join these two sections together, we do have to put this piece down. Uh, luckily, I caught that before I started uh, gluing this together. Uh, otherwise, because this tapers out, we'd never get this over. Okay, so we do need to glue this down first. So let's flip this over and apply our glue. Now this hat, eventually, we are going to train it just to kind of flare out the, uh, the, the edges of the sides of the hat. Okay, so we may need to go back in and kind of add a little bit of glue here or there. Now drop this very gently, just to make sure we don't have to move it around too much and get it as centered as you can. Pardon my head there for a second. Okay, just like that. And press that down into place. Be very patient, very careful, especially if you're using this pearlescent paper. We don't want to blemish that paper. Okay, perfect. So now we're going to pop this like this upside down because it's got to look like this. Obviously, we want that paper to be showing once we get this all constructed. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to pick a tab, any tab, doesn't matter. I'm going to grab this one here. And we're going to throw a little bit of glue right on that tab, nice and thin. I stopped squeezing. Now I'm just kind of using the, the tip of the nozzle there to kind of spread that glue around. And then we're going to press that up against the inside of the main structure. Now I'm going to flip it around like this. So I can actually take a look and make sure that the top of that hat is making good contact and is flush with the actual brim of the hat. Okay, and then just very gently give that a good press and hold for a few moments, let it set. Okay, and there we go. Okay, so we just glued that one down. We're gonna move over to, this, to the one opposite of this one here, which is here, and we'll do the same thing. Apply your glue, nice and easy, nice and thin. Spread it around and press it up against the inside. And again, I'm kind of holding it I'm going to take a look at it from this vantage point just to make sure that it's nice and flush with the brim of the hat. And then I can just press and hold it, give it a few moments to set. And then we're going to kind of do like a little crisscross or cross pattern here and just jump around from tab to tab. So these two right here where my two fingers are, these are the ones that are glued down. So we're going to go here. We're going to skip one and we're going to go here and I'm just going to repeat the same thing. So get your glue on there, nice and thin, nice and easy. There we go. And press that inside. Same thing. Just be conscious of the fact that we want the top of the hat to be flush with the brim. We are going to be putting a band around this. So there's a little wiggle room to fix a potential mistake. But again, I'm going to try to do the best work we can possibly do. Don't worry about perfection. There's nothing, nothing's perfect in life. And this is also 
You have to think about the fact that there's a lot of variables involved in this. Uh, the way that the machine cuts, which machine you have, the type of paper you have, the type of glue you have, um, how much coffee you've had, how much sleep you've had, uh, humidity, background noise, all sorts of stuff that can interfere with or prevent you from making this perfectly. Um, again, I don't think there's anything, no such thing as perfect in crafting. There's always going to be a little blemish or something and uh, wouldn't beat yourself up over it. It's going to look great. There we go. Okay. So that leaves, we still have, I think, two more, or do we have four more? We still have four more. We still have these. So it doesn't matter. I'm going to do these two, and then I'm going to do these two. Same process. And then we'll move on to the next step. So just wrap that up. Now at this point, should be pr the rest of these should sort of naturally be flush with the brim because the other ones are kind of, uh, they're already pretty solid. Okay, so I've got three more to go. Nice and easy. I think you could, you could definitely use um, this hat for New Year's actually, I think. I think uh, a top hat is I think it's one of those staples or symbols for New Year's, I'd say. Maybe a top hat and a glass of wine or champagne, I should say. Um, what else? Anyway, yeah, we don't re really do anything, any New Year's bundles, just because it's not popular enough. And I feel like by the time Christmas is over and New Year's comes around, Everyone's kind of burnt out, and the last thing you want to do is craft for New Year's. Um, so, I don't know, kind of just skip over it. Um, I've done some New Year's stuff with my previous company, and I don't think it really went over too well here and there. But Okay, so the structure of our top hat is pretty much done. Okay, so again, we have a band. Okay, that's gonna, we're gonna put that on first. And then we're gonna have a little bow that's gonna go on. I'm just gonna take a look at everything, make sure I'm doing it right. Yeah, so you can see the little band and how that's gonna go on. And as I mentioned, this is where, you know, if you kind of goofed up and there's a little gap or something, this band may hide any imperfections you may have. Hard to say. Uh, but what we're gonna do, you wanna make sure this is folded. There's four sections. I'm gonna glue the first two sections to, uh, in place, the middle, the two middle pieces are gonna go down first, okay? So I only have glue on the two sections here, which is, which is why I can hold it like this without gl getting glue on my fingers, okay? And I'm gonna just lay this down right onto, I think it might just be easier to do this while it's on my table. Use the little folded areas as your guide. This thing has some score marks on it. So line that up with the edge there. And again, make sure that it's just kind of push it down up against the brim as far as it'll go. And just hold that in place. We're gonna leave this one alone here. There's one side that does not have a tab and there's one side that does have a tab. We're gonna glue down the side that has a tab first so go ahead and apply glue to this section as well as the tab and then fold that over. Again, making sure that you keep that nice and flush with the brim. Push it down as far as it'll go, press down. Same with the little tab there. Okay, you can see how that looks. Looking sharp, looking good. All right, so now we're gonna leave this one alone. I'm gonna kind of move it out of the way. And we're gonna grab the other half here. Now, what you wanna make sure you do here is there's gonna be, again, one end with a tab. This needs to end up right here, okay? So that we can eventually take this section and pop it right on top, okay? Which means that we're gonna glue, again, just like we did before, these two middle sections. We're gonna glue those down first. Nice and easy with the glue. 
again, just make sure that we have this aligned correctly. I'm just putting this down in place just to double check and make sure that when I put this over, it's gonna go right on top of that tab. Okay, these are the two in the middle that I'm focused on right now. Okay, so just like we did the first time, pop that into place, make sure it's pushed down as far as it'll go so it's making contact with the brim of the hat. And just very gently press that into place. Looking good. And now this one here, obviously we can pull this back, throw a little bit of glue on this guy here. Make sure you get a little bit of glue right out to the very edge of this piece. And then just bring that down and it should line up perfectly with where that tab is. Okay, just press that into place and hold it. All right, now we're gonna go over here. We're gonna grab the piece here that has the tab on it and apply our glue to that section as well as the tab. Make sure you get a little bit of glue on that tab. Fold it over, flush with the brim, down as far as it'll go, and then push that tab over as well. Okay, and then finally, you can go back to the original piece, throw a little bit of glue on that guy, all the way out to the edge as well, and then bring it down and it should match up perfectly. And there we go. Okay, looking good, looking good, looking good. All right, so next uh, we have this piece here and that's gonna go right on top. We're gonna try to maintain a, a nice even border all the way around. So we have a, a little bit of that gold showing through. Okay, so let's do that. Very easy with the glue here. We don't need a lot. We don't want it squirting out either. So I'm just kind of doing a circular motion with my, with my glue here. Nice little zigzag in the center. And again, very carefully pop that into place. And I'm just, my eyes are kind of scanning uh, clockwise, counterclockwise, looking at the border, making sure that it's even before I commit and press that all down into place. And then just kind of go in a circle, hit the little middle. You could also flip it over and press down from the inside to really get it to make better contact. Check your, check the edges there. And I'm gluing cardstock to this not so porous paper and just making sure that I'm not getting any of it kind of sticking up. If you run into that problem, throw a little bit of glue on scrap paper. There's nothing here, so you could literally rub it on there. Or better yet, you can just you can lay it on the gold section and slide it right underneath without messing up the gold, but getting the glue exactly where you need it. And then you can just push that little corner down so that you don't have any gaps. Okay, and mine looks great. All right, so next we do have a series of little panels for the side of the hat, these guys here. And you'll notice that they are not, they're, they're not boxes. They're kind of tapered and they're a little bit wider at the top, okay? And what we're gonna do with these, we're gonna glue these on and they're actually gonna rest on the band, okay? So that is, that's how it should look. It's gonna rest on the band. Try to make, make it centered, as centered as you can get it. And nice and easy with the glue here. And we're just gonna go around the entire hat until all of the panels are in place. Again, make sure that it is nice and flush with the red band. So it sort of looks like it's tucked behind, but you know, this way you're using less paper and it doesn't get so bulky. It's almost like a little puzzle that we're putting together now, but that is looking sharp. So moving on to the next one, just have a few more to go here and then we can start working on the little decorative elements of the hat. Okay. Again, I'm just kind of pushing it up against the band, making sure it's centered, and then just pressing it down the rest of the way. Okay, nice and easy. You can actually get your hand in there too. Press that down. And before we start putting together the little floral element with the bow, uh, I am gonna show you how to kind of flare this out a little bit. And I think it's just gonna be a matter of doing it very gently and slowly just to kind of uh, release the memory of the fibers in that paper so that 
and just kind of flares up a little bit. So again, just pushing it up against the band as far as it'll go, taking a look at the top and bottom here, or to the left and the right of this black piece, making sure that I have equal amounts of border on both sides, and then just dropping it down and pressing it into place. Okay, here we go. Just a few more. There we go. It's a cool little hat, actually. I could see someone doing something steampunky with this. I think that would be cool. Okay. There we go. So how is yours coming along? Hopefully just as good as mine. Just take your time. Don't rush. Do your best. And most importantly, have fun. Ooh, that was not very centered. There we go. So as I mentioned on Facebook, and the more I, the more I think about it, uh, one day my kids will maybe, one day when I'm gone, it's kind of macabre, but maybe they'll watch these videos just to kind of remember me. And uh, so I do like to kind of talk about them a little bit. Uh, but as I mentioned on Facebook, this is kind of, uh, this is the last bundle before our baby boy is born. We're going to the hospital, not this Sunday, but the following. Uh, it's scheduled. It's going to be, it's going to get induced. Technically, it could happen sooner than that if he decides to, uh, you know, decides to, decides to want to get out early. Um, so who knows, but that's the plan right now. And I'm sure that um, when I get back in the studio, I'll probably see everything in a new light. So we'll see. At least that's what people tell me. But <clears throat> I tend to have a, uh, um, I'm a eternal optimist, but I tend to be a little bit cynical about some things. And I was never one to uh, believe the hype with anything, <laughs> uh, but eventually, um, you know, when you hear all these stories from everyone and then you finally experience it yourself, and you're like, well, gee gosh darn, they were right. So we'll see if that holds true. Okay, all right, looks good. All right, so next, uh, again, as I mentioned, what we want to do is we want to kind of bring the corners. Well, let's let's let's. I'm gonna to try to explain it like this. Um, if you look at it like this, you can see you can see that this is kind of oval. It's not a perfect circle, and this is the wider side. This is the shorter side. This is the wider side. We want to take these two ends and kind of flare them up a little bit, which means that. Uh, if you're holding it like this, this is the front. This is where we're going to put the bow and, you know, uh, the little floral piece. So we need to bring in these sides here. So what I would do is just keep this, keep this corner facing you. Maybe even line it up with one of these grid lines um, on your mat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a dowel just so that I can do this um, more consistently. And I'm just going to take and bring this up, up against the dowel, okay, just very easily. Just kind of loosen those fibers up a little bit, very gently. I don't want to, you don't want to crease it. You just want it to kind of curve up a little bit. So just very easily. And I would go back and forth a little bit. Just kind of loosen up those fibers. And let's take a look and see what that looks like, okay? So you can see how that comes up. Now, that might not be as gradual as I would have liked. So what I'm gonna do, again, find that, find that front. I'm gonna bring the dowel in a little bit more and bring this whole thing up a little bit. Just very gently, like that. Yeah, I think that looks good, okay? So again, 
keeping that nice and straight. Now, if you want, you can see there's two points here. Just to make it easier, just flip it around. Okay, I think that'll actually make it more consistent. Uh, put the dowel down, just kind of grab the end and bring it up. If you can kind of work that dowel back and forth a little bit, loosen up those, those paper fibers a bit. Okay, and there you go. So you can see how it kind of flares up a little bit. I think that's all you need. Um, you can make it more pronounced if you want, but either way. Okay, so next, uh, what we're gonna do is we have, we have a couple pieces. We have this piece, this funky looking thing, looks like something that maybe you'd see on an alien. Um, we're gonna glue these two sections together to make it two layers thick. Okay, and ultimately, these little circles that you see here, what you can do is you can adorn these with um, some rhinestones because these are essentially going to be little berries. Um, oh no, almost dropped that. Okay, so we're just putting two of them together, just one on top of the other, just to thicken this up. Now this paper, this pearlescent paper is probably, I'd say it's probably a hundred pound, probably get away with it, get away with just using one layer, but hey, you know what? doesn't hurt to double it up okay and like i said we're going to throw some we're going to throw some red rhinestones on these just to uh, make it look like there's little berries on there okay and then um behind that um, we have this little holly i think it's not i don't know if it's really holly it looks more like something looks like a pine actually um, you'll notice that on one piece there's a series of little score marks here and it may be a little difficult to fold this accurately. Uh, what I would do is grab a little dowel and pop that right on top of where the, uh, where the folds are. Um, you can try to do it with your fingers. I mean, it should work, but I think this might be a little more accurate if I put that in there and then just take my little spatula and fold it up like that. Just the idea here is to give this a little bit of dimension. Okay, so that was the initial fold just to kind of get it up. And I think that will, that'll do it. You can see how they're kind of standing up there. Okay, I'll do the same thing here. And it's kind of difficult to get your fingers in there. So I'm just using a little spatula, almost like I'm peeling this off of my mat just to get that up a little bit. Okay, and then you can fold it in a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take and glue the layer that we just um, that we just trained on top of the flat layer, and it kind of gives it a nice thick look. Okay, and I think it's okay if we just put some glue on this part here, and maybe just a little bit up here. I kind of like the fact that it was separated from the other one. Okay, so just line that up. This is going to go behind our little bow. And then take that other one, pop it right on top. I think it was off a little bit. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter too much. Okay, and you can kind of flare these up a little bit. There we go. That's fine. All right, so, so we've got that. Um, this little gold piece that we just put together is actually gonna get glued on top of this little holly or evergreen, whatever you wanna call it, and just match up the little square piece. Make sure that the bottom of each of these is flush and right on top of, make sure the gold is right on top of the green. You can see how it's flush right there at the bottom. Okay, perfect. And finally, we have a little bow. Now there's two bows. He's got one on his hat and he's got one under his chin. And we wanna make sure that we use the smaller bow for the one on his hat. Okay, so you're gonna need these three pieces. And what we're gonna do, I'm gonna grab a, probably use this dowel here. I'm gonna take my dowel and I'm gonna place the dowel between my finger and well, I'm gonna place the paper between the dowel and my finger. I'm gonna lift this up about 90 degrees and I'm gonna run the dowel through. I'm gonna do that on both sides. 
like so. Okay, and what we're gonna do, you'll notice that we have a little tr uh, little square here. It's actually, it's actually a rectangle. I'm gonna put glue on the inside. So whatever pattern you're using, you're gonna put glue on the other side of the pattern. And then you'll notice on in the center here, there's also some folds here. What we're gonna do is match up this rectangle with the rectangle in the center. And just do your best to make sure it's as centered as possible. If you're off a tad, not the end of the world. This bow making with paper is very forgiving. Okay, and just hold that in place for a moment. And this paper, it's pretty loose. So it's not really fighting me all that much. Okay, so we have one loop done. I'm gonna take and apply glue to the other little rectangle on the non-pattern side and pop that in just like we did. Get it nice and centered and hold that in place. Okay, and there's your bow, almost. I did ink this with a little bit of green just to kind of jazz it up a bit. Okay, so our bow is almost done. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this piece and you wanna pop that right on the middle of your bow, center it, and then just fold it over and tuck the ends behind the bow like that. And that's just gonna give the illusion that, well, it's actually, you know, there's some ribbon or whatnot going over the center. So it doesn't look so flat. <clears throat> now we can take, and just apply a little bit of glue right to the very end of one of the sides, bring the other side over and press and, and hold that in place. There we go. And plus I also ink that, so it just makes it look nicer. And then finally, you'll see on the tail here, and you can actually do too, before we put it, get it in place, grab a little dowel, place the tail between your finger and the dowel, lift it up 90 degrees and run the dowel through just to give it a little bit of dimension. And if you look, there is somewhat of a little rectangle there in the center. What we're gonna do is apply our glue to the back side of the bow where we join the two ends together of that little center piece. And we're gonna pop that right in place so that the top, the straight part of the bow, of the tails I should say, is pretty much flush with the center of the bow. Take a look at it, make sure that it's properly aligned so it's not kinda, of, you know, so that it's straight on. And there you go. Okay, so there's our little bow and then of course, we're gonna take and apply some glue to the back of this and glue that to this piece here. And again, that little rectangle is where you wanna line everything up. And don't forget, I usually do this after everything's already assembled, but don't forget to put some little rhinestones in those little circles there. That little pop of red will really bring everything together nicely. Okay. Okay, so you can hot glue this on if you want. Um, I am going to use a little pop dot actually. I'm gonna put the pop dot right on that green section. And you wanna pop that right on. I'm gonna put it just above <clears throat> the little band. Cause I don't want, if you try to bring it down any more than that, I think you're gonna squish the little tails on the bow, but that's kind of what we want it to look like, okay? So the hat's done, and we can move on to the main structure here. Let me put my hot glue gun away. Actually, I thought I was gonna use it, but decided against it. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna start off by building the main structure, and again, this is where we're gonna be gluing a series of tabs together, just like we did with the hat. And let me get this hot glue out of here. Okay, so as you can see here, um, one end does not have a tab, one end does have a tab. This is your bottom, this is your top. Okay, and the bottom and top are gonna be straight. Everything else is gonna kind of bulge out. And these two are gonna be straight up and down. So it's gonna kind of look like this is gonna be flat, straight up and down. This is gonna be straight up and down. The rest of it's gonna kind of curve in a little bit. Okay, and it will kind of naturally 
just take shape as we assemble it. Okay, and you'll, you'll see what I mean here in a second. So I'm gonna grab one of these, doesn't matter which one. Again, make sure you pre-fold everything. Um, just kind of loosen up the fibers. Um, it'll make the whole process a lot easier. We're gonna start in the center here. And there is a tiny little tab there that I do want you to try to glue down. I typically don't have any problems with it. You just have to be very gentle with it. And once you get it in place, just hold it. That glue will do the rest of the work. Uh, if you feel that it's kind of hard for you to do that, you could technically skip it. And I don't think it's really gonna make too much of a difference uh, aesthetically, but again, try to glue it in place. And then we're gonna work our way up. We're gonna put glue on the next tab here. Very easy, nice and thin amounts. Grab that next section, line it up, and press and hold. Now I'm back to cardstock. This is AC cardstock. The color is, I think it's AC Rain. And I'm glad to be working with car cardstock again because I know how quickly the glue is gonna set when I go to join these two sections together. Literally, it just takes a few seconds. As long as you're not overdoing it with the glue, this should go pretty quick. Okay, and then again, this top section is gonna go straight up and here we go. Okay, just putting a little bit of glue on this tab, making sure that I'm getting it out to the very edge and line that up and press and hold. There we go. So the top section is together. Now we can move down here. And again, we do have this tiny little tab here. Again, throw a little bit of glue on there, nice and thin. You can actually just kind of move this out of the way and line that up. It's gonna kind of come in a little bit. Just line it up as accurately as you can and press and hold. Give that a few seconds to set. Okay. And I don't wanna move that too much right now because it's a very thin little tab. So I'll just flip it over and apply the glue to the next tab from the inside. Flip it back around, line it up. I didn't pre-fold that one. Make sure you pre-fold all the tabs. Trust me when I say it, it makes it uh, way easier during the assembly. And then finally down here, as you can see, as I mentioned, and I'll point it out here in just a second. Final little tab on section one. And that should be straight up and down, like so. Okay, so as I mentioned, straight, straight, and curved, okay? And we are just gonna repeat this process until we have both of these sections complete. And we're gonna start uh, working our way up. And of course, we have that little tiny, pesky little tiny tab. If you want, you can actually Fold this down, move it out of the way so you can get your fingers in there. Line that up as accurately as you can. Now, sometimes when you do that, it makes it a little bit tougher to see your alignment, but just, just focus, you'll see it. Okay. And moving right along here to the next tab. Get that lined up as accurately as you can. Press and hold, go easy on the glue. And we're just gonna keep going until we have the main structure all assembled here. Okay. So as I mentioned earlier, while we were working on the hat, if you are also using AC cardstock like I am, and you find yourself not being able to move at the pace that I'm moving, um, just go easier on the glue. If you happen to get a ton of glue on one of the tabs, just wipe it off. Wipe it off, but use your finger. Um, you can use well, anything you have handy, really. A uh, scrap piece of paper will also work. Uh, I just like to use my finger. I feel like I have the most control with that. Okay, and the last section here at the top. Hold that in place. Oops. There we go. 
And if you get a little bit of glue that squirts out, just wipe it off. Uh, most of this is going to be covered up anyway because we're going to put panels on this. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the bottom here. And we've got that little guy there. Nice and easy with the glue. I'm going to fold that back. And I think I'm going to use my left hand here, line that up and hold it in place. You're not going to, don't have a lot of surface area to hold onto that tab, but just the tip of your finger should do the trick. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I got fingers a little sticky there. Just rub some of that off. And moving right along. So nothing different here. This process is going to repeat until we have this whole thing assembled. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually assemble these two sections in sections um, without joining them all together. I think it's easier just to work with one of the segments at a time. And when I say one of the segments, here's the other half of this. So we'll put this one together first, then that one, then we'll join it all together instead of having, you know, um, eight lay or eight sections kind of dangling around making it more difficult for you to maneuver and get your hand into the various places that it needs to get to to get this done okay so moving right along here last little tab for this section again this one goes straight up and down there's no angle on this one and we're going to rinse and repeat. There we go. Okay, so this one's almost together. All right, bring this down. We're gonna work our way up again, starting with the tiny tab. And everything else is gonna be the same as it was the last three times, which means that it can be story time. <laughs> um, yeah, well, Things are certainly going to be interesting the next few weeks. Um, you know, one thing that I was thinking about, I kind of, kind of regret maybe waiting so long to have a kid. You know, my, my sister out in Cleveland, well, she's actually out in the suburbs. Um, she has four kids already. Uh, two boys, two girls. One of them is... Jeez, I think she's already 13, so she got a jump start on it. And uh, I kind of regret not doing that because uh, I have the feeling, you know, um, probably going to see my family a lot more, <laughs> which is kind of sad because, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty cool, but I guess I'm not cool enough to, to hang out with all the time. But, you know, um, I'm sure with a, a baby boy, uh, we'll be seeing, hopefully seeing my parents a lot more because they are getting up there. You know, I had to give them a reason to come visit me, I guess. <clears throat> you know, I'm not saying we have a bad relationship or anything, but who knows? Maybe my mom will even, my mom might even move back out here for a little while. Who knows? She's out in, uh, in Ohio. She actually lives right next door to my sister. They found a house right next door. My dad's busy kind of renovating it and doing whatever he wants to do with it. Uh, I'm not sure if he's planning on selling it or moving there or what's going on. Kind of a weird situation. Now, see, I, I let that go prematurely, and, and it came undone because it's a small little tab. So again, with this little guy here, just be patient and wait. We have uh, less surface area for that glue to do its thing. But anyway, yeah, so that'll be a bonus. I think, uh, I think people will understand if we don't want to go driving around too much with a baby. Although Lisa will tell me I'm crazy. But I think it'll be nice to kind of hunker down this winter and just enjoy the newborn and see what lessons it can teach me. Uh, I know for a fact one of the lessons it'll teach me is that I sh probably should have taken advantage of sleep before we had a baby. 
but my brain is too wired up for sleep. I'm gonna get all kind of force me to sleep more, which is probably good for me anyway. If I have uh, if I have an empty house, I will be up till two, three in the morning doing the most random stuff, researching things, r reading things, experimenting, doing the most random stuff, <laughs> which isn't a bad thing. But okay. So there is one section complete. Now, as you can see, as I stretch it out, it starts to look more like a snowman's head. Uh, it naturally wants to kind of curve in like that, and that's okay. Don't worry about that right now. Uh, we'll go through that in just a bit. Uh, but we do want to now assemble this half, okay? And the process is gonna be exactly the same. I'm gonna start with a little tab here, okay? And just move that out of the way, bring that in, line it up, and press and hold. You can see how I kind of moved the top section out of the way, just to make it easier for me to get my fingers in there. And I'm gonna hold this for a few extra seconds, more than I normally would if it was down here, just because it's so it's, it's holding up a lot of weight on this tiny little tab, so I don't want it to come loose. Okay, moving up to the next one here. Same process. Okay, bring that in. Make sure that you line it up correctly because it is kind of curving in at this point. And there we go. It's nice that everyone is super excited to see a little Leo. I know that many of you have, I actually, I talked to one of our dreamers today, said that, uh, who's she making stuff for? She said she was, uh, her and her sister was, uh, they were working on some crafts and I said, who are you making all this stuff for? She said, I was usually make it for my, for my daughter. And I was like, well, how old's your daughter? And, you know, daughter's already in her 40s. Um, so a lot of you have, have experienced bringing a child into the world and seeing them already, you know, leave the house and all that stuff. So I, I think you guys are, you guys know, so many of you already know what I'm in, in for. And I think you're just, you're very happy because you know what that feeling is. So I'm kind of feeling that energy from you guys. And I, I'm pretty sure you're gonna be right. <laughs> I just kind of feel like it's a, like some weird science experiment having a kid. Because you know, he's got, he's got half your DNA. Yeah, I don't know, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. I just think it's wild. I'm just curious how he's gonna think He's gonna think like me. God help him. Because <laughs> my mind is, uh, I don't know. It's out there, man. Okay, so I did it again. I kind of let it go a little bit prematurely. So learn from me and just be patient while that sets. All right, so moving right along here. Had a little too much glue shoot out there, so just kind of thinned it out with my finger, as I normally do. Gonna get that lined up, and there we go. And the last one here on the first section. And there we go. Yeah, I just cleaned out my <clears throat> my nozzle, and that's why things are kind of flowing a little more rapidly than they were, that's okay. <clears throat> okay, all right, so first section is done. Moving along here to the next section. Let's start off with this little guy. There we go. I don't know if I mentioned this during the video, but um, Got a few comments saying that uh, when baby Peyton's born, 
and I should put them in one of those little one of those slings or those little uh, those little carriers that you kind of put over your shoulders and the baby just kind of sits you know on your chest and your stomach like a little a little baby kangaroo and then I should try to craft <laughs> with him on me and I'm just picturing that and I don't think that would work out very well but you guys will definitely get to see him I'm sure I'll be posting some photos probably even from the hospital because I feel like you guys are my extended family you guys take care of me I take care of you and uh, just consider myself very blessed to be in the type of business that I'm in because boy uh, you guys are very patient and understanding and sweet and not a lot of businesses like that these days but I guess at the same time I think maybe if uh, I don't know, get a lot of rave reviews about our customer service so maybe if other businesses took care of their customers then they'd feel the same way so I don't know who knows Okay, so I am working my way down now, just like I've done many times up to this point. Yeah, and this, this part is the tedious part here. Not hard, just kind of repetitive. And again, a good time to kind of zone in, kind of lose yourself, quiet the mind a little bit, and make something beautiful. was talking to Ron the other day and he mentioned that he was surprised to see so many of you make the uh, the Mother Bates place and I actually I, I wasn't surprised I thought it was gonna be quite the hit and it turned out that it was and now many of you are turning it into a Christmas house and we've got a little surprise in store for you guys I had I had the team I asked Ron to design um, some garland and some wreaths for Mother Bates Place so that you can, you know, add some, add a little Christmas flair to the actual house itself without having to make your own and, you know, guess the sizes and, and so on and so forth. So that's going to be really cool. I'm actually uh, kind of been, well, since the last bundle, been doing a lot of computer-related stuff, so I haven't been doing any side crafting, as I call it. Um, also had to kind of winterize the yard and the house, and get ready for the cool, the cool temps which I actually enjoy doing. I enjoy working around the house. Um, had a lot of leaves this year. But anyway, I'm gonna be doing a Christmas house and I'm kinda looking forward to it because I wanna build, uh, for those of you that saw the little base that I built uh, for my Halloween house, I wanna do one for Christmas. And I'm gonna see if I can figure out how to make like, um, just little hills of snow. I have to experiment with that a little bit. I kind of picture the house having just little hills behind it to add some height and some depth to the actual house itself. That'll look cool. And then of course, actually, you know what? I think I have, these are little prototypes here. You can see that, this little garland and some wreaths with some bows for the house. Those are just prototypes, so it's not the actual final color. And of course, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ink it, make it really pretty. So hopefully it'll inspire you guys to make yourself a Christmas house. Okay, there we go. There it is. All right. So the two sections are complete. So now what we're gonna do <clears throat> is we're gonna join them together. Uh, so the process is pretty much the same, okay? And I'm actually gonna start on top like so. 
So we're gonna anchor it at the top. Throw a little glue on there. Oh boy, that's really coming out. So I stopped, I saw that it was coming out really heavy. So I st stopped squeezing and just used the tip of the nozzle to uh, kind of spread it around. Okay, so with this first one, just make sure that you get it nice and lined up and that it's nice and flush at the top. Okay, we wanna make sure that keep this as consistent all the way around as possible. Okay, give that a few seconds for that, that first anchor piece to really take hold. And then we we'll start working our way in there. Now this is where, this is where we're gonna need to do some painting, I think. You could technically, if you wanted to, you could try to get the glue in there, like you know, sticking it through. I, I don't think that's a good idea. So just throw a little bit of glue on a scrap piece of paper and then just paint it right onto that tab. And then line it up. And just hold it in place. Here we go. You know, I never noticed that. I just did that and for some reason, a little bit of orange came off onto my paper. So I've never seen that before. So I'm gonna use uh, a white piece of paper to paint the glue on in there so that I don't get any, any of that color spilling onto the surface of my main structure here. Okay, so this is gonna be a little A little more difficult because you don't have a lot of room to get your fingers in there. Once we get down like halfway, we can work our way in from the other side. So it'll, should be okay. I'm not too concerned about it. I'm gonna refill this. Just add a little extra glue on there. And again, just paint it right on that tab. And I'm gonna do the next one here too. Okay. So now here, if you need to, you can also take a little dowel and just use that dowel to press from the inside. Unless you have really long fingers, which I'm guessing you probably don't, use a little dowel to push from the inside. Okay, and that worked nicely. All right, so I've got three tabs left for that section. I'm gonna refill this. And I'm just gonna spread that glue right on that tab. And I'll do this one too. Why not? Okay, so now we can, if we move these bottom tabs out of the way, we should be able to get our hands in there from the bottom. And just make sure it's nice and lined up. And there we go. That looks good. I think I missed that tab, but you can always go back in and fix it. As long as these are all lined up, we're in good shape. Okay, and that just leaves my last tab, which you could technically glue from the inside here. And just spread that around with the nozzle. That, I had way too much glue on that one. So you can see it's squirting out, getting all over my hand. That's okay, just rub it off, no big deal. And that looks pretty good. Now, if you do have any gaps, I'm gonna grab a, grab a nice thin piece of scrap here. I'm gonna actually make it skinnier. Okay, like that. And just throw a little bit of glue on there. Where did I just connect that? Right here. Just gonna poke a little bit of glue right in there. I think I missed that spot. And there we go, just press and hold. If you have a little bit of a gap, not a problem. And again, like I mentioned, this is all mostly gonna be hidden once we get it all finalized, okay? So now we've got the last section that we need to kind of join and I'm going to anchor it at the top once again. 
I'll thin that out nicely. Okay, and then grab that. And here's where we need to kind of, we need to kind of force it apart. There's some tension uh, between, uh, well, some tension that's happening here because these pieces, they want to kind of come in, but we do need to kind of force it out. Okay, so just hold that top part in place. And if it does make it easier for you, you could technically glue the bottom in place. I'm just doing the top right now. You could do the bottom and then work your way. Uh, actually, that's big enough to get your hand in there, so that might not be a bad idea. Okay, but I've got that section glued down. So you know what, let's do that. I think this is gonna make it a lot easier if we just put a little bit of glue on the bottom now and anchor this into place. Just make sure you line it up correctly. Whoops. Okay. Line it up as accurately as you can. And you see how it's gonna pop out like that. Just need to make sure we line this up correctly. There we go. That's just gonna make it a lot easier for us to get our hands in there now. Yeah, I like that idea. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna grab my really thin little scrap piece of paper here, load it up with a little bit of glue, and just start applying it. Okay, actually, see how much room we have now? Instead of sticking your whole glue nozzle in there, I'm just gonna dab some glue on the first tab here. Okay, so it's that one right there. And then I am gonna look at it from the outside just to make sure that I'm getting it aligned correctly. Because again, we need to kind of force this out a little bit and fight that tension that it has. And then get that lined up. And as we make our way down, it's really gonna start taking shape nicely. Okay, I'm gonna go and do this one next. So again, you can actually take and just flare all these tabs out. And I'll show you here that it is possible to get your glue nozzle in there. So you could do it that way as well. You don't have to use the scrap piece of paper method. Okay, so I just put glue on that tab there. Again, looking at it from the outside, because I do wanna make sure that it is lined up correctly. There we go, just like that. Perfect. Okay. All right. Flare that tab out. And apply my glue. I think that's fine. And we're on this section here. Line that up. Maybe got a little too much glue on that one. It's okay though. Beautiful. Okay, this is coming together easier than I thought it would actually. All right, so that just leaves a handful of tabs here. I've got three left. And let's see if I can show you the three tabs in there. You can see I'm kind of poking up. Okay, fold that over and get some glue on one of them. If you are feeling confident, you could do two. Maybe you could even do the last three. It's up to you. However you want to do it, it's fine with me. If this is your first time working on something like this, I would probably just err on the side of caution and just do a couple at a time, maybe just one at a time, just so you can really focus on the accuracy. Okay, I did two. I wasn't sure that one wasn't completely dry yet. Just be patient here. Okay, and that just leaves this one here. And then one more up top. There we go. Okay, and we got one final tab at the top there. You can see it kind of sticking up. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put my glue in from the bottom. And again, just use the Use the tip of your nozzle to kind of spread it around. And there it is right there. That's the guy right there. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So that's the top of his head. And you can see here how nicely that's going to fit on there once it's all done. 
I'm going to flip it over this way and fold these tabs down. We're going to close up the bottom and that's going to help this thing be nice and strong. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to apply glue to just one of the tabs. Okay, because we want to want to anchor it. It's going to make the rest of it a lot easier. Grab this piece and line it up. Make sure it's nice and centered and right out to the very edge of that tab. Okay, and just hold that in place for a moment and flip it up a little bit and press down on the rest of the tab. Make sure it's making full contact. Check your seam, check your alignment, looks great, which means we can now flare this out like so. And we're going to apply glue to all of these tabs and close this up. Now I'm gonna go a little bit heavier on the glue here because I am gonna take and with my finger, I'm gonna spread this all out to the very edges of the tabs and I don't want it to dry prematurely. So I'm going a little bit heavier. And this is the bottom, no one's really gonna see it anyway. So uh, sometimes when you use a lot of glue, it ends up kind of warping the paper, but I don't think that's gonna happen. As long as you thin it out, usually you're in good shape. We're gonna close this up and focus on getting it aligned with this section here, opposite of the side that's already anchored. Get that centered because doing so, the rest of it sort of naturally falls into place. You may need to kind of push the walls in a little bit on some of the sections. And if that's the case, then it's okay. That's by design, that's normal because this thing is not, you know, it's not made of stone, it's paper. So it flexes and it moves. Okay, once you've got that lined up, you can press down from the inside to help the rest of those tabs make contact. And I'm gonna make sure that my seams are nice and clean. You can see there's a gap there, so I'm gonna clean that up. Um, we're gonna put a little collar on him and the collar will probably hide any of these little imperfections, but I'm just going to make sure that I get it done right the first time. Okay, so I had a gap there, added a little bit of glue, just use my little paint method, and I'm just gonna hold while that sets, and just kinda look around, let me see. Yeah, I don't think, I mean, if you do have some gaps, no one's really gonna see them, but like I said, I sleep better at night knowing that I did my best, and then I put in the effort to, well, you know, also, it's not just aesthetic. Um, this will help it last longer too, if it's built properly, obviously. Okay, so that scene looks good. That one looks good. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay, all right, so that's done. Okay, so this collar, um, well, it's four pieces. Now, one thing that you're gonna want to pay attention to is the fact that we have these two that look like this, and then these are kind of, they have a little angle here. Um, this is the front of the collar. Okay, now I just need to decide which side is gonna be my front. Uh, I did a pretty good job with the assembly on this, so I, I don't think it really matters, but I'm gonna make this the front. Uh, and one other thing too that I need to do, uh, because a little bit of this, this is gonna be my front. A little bit of this is actually gonna be exposed uh, because, well, the collar doesn't cover up the entire thing. There's a little bit here that's exposed. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna hit this, the, what I'm calling the front with a little bit of turquoise ink here on the bottom. Uh, I don't need to ink the rest of it because it's not gonna be visible because the collar is gonna hide it. Uh, but I wanted a little bit of, a little bit of turquoise right there. So I'm going to leave that like that. And then I also have, I need to put a little bit of pink. It looks like I missed inking this little section here. Okay. And the bottom of that is going to be, actually, I think that's going to be covered up anyway. We'll see. Okay. So what we're going to do, this is going to be my front. What we're going to do is we're going to connect these two sections together. Uh, in just a minute. Actually, you know what, let's just do that now. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a little bit of glue on this little triangular tab, because I need to connect it with this guy here. Okay, so just line that up as accurately as you can. You can actually put this down on your surface if it makes it easier for you. Just make sure that it's lined up accurately, and then just press and hold that down. 
uh, this section we want to glue down first. And then what we're gonna do is flip these tabs down. We're gonna put glue on these tabs and then these tabs are gonna go up against the actual structure here, like so. Okay, and then eventually we're gonna join all of these sections together. Okay, but I'm gonna do just one section at a time. So it would help, I think it's gonna help you if you really fold these tabs down. Okay, just give it a little bit of, give it a little bit of elbow grease. And I'm gonna take and throw a little bit of glue right on this tab here, nice and easy. It is embossed, so it may prove to be a little more difficult to glue something down if it's embossed, but line that up so that it's flush with that section there. Okay, and just hold that in place, like so. I'm gonna grab this other section here and just make sure that I've got it lined up correctly. Okay, that looks good. So what I can do now is apply some glue to this next little tab, like so. And get that lined up. Actually do that nice and flat. You don't wanna smush the little center part where these two meet, but you can push this down flat. I have my hand inside here pushing from the inside. Okay, there we go. That's looking good. All right, next. Whoops, kind of dented that a little bit. I'm gonna put some glue on the next section here. There we go. And let's press that up against the base. Make sure it is nice and aligned. Okay, I'm kind of pushing it down flat. Again, it would help if you put your hand in there to give it something to press up against. Don't worry about bending it, it's okay. There we go, okay. And then we'll go, I'm gonna leave that one alone for a minute. And we'll move on, we'll grab this next section here. Okay, we do need to glue this to this tab first. So go ahead and do that. Oops. Throw some glue on this little tab and grab one of these pieces. It doesn't really ma matter which one you grab at this point. Okay, tuck this tab back so it's behind this main piece that I'm holding here, the face of it. Line that up as accurately as you can. Okay, let me get this ink out of here. There we go, okay. And now, just like we did before, I'm going to put some glue on the tab. And press that right onto the structure. Make sure it's nice and lined up. There we go. And just press and hold. There we go. Okay. So now we're on to this tab here. Let's throw a little bit of glue on that. Tuck that behind. Let's stick my hand in there. Make sure it's lined up and just give that a good press. There we go. Pretty easy. You can see how that little collar looks. Okay. All right, so next, I'm gonna grab this next section here. Again, take those tabs, tuck them behind. Okay, I'm gonna throw a little bit of glue on this tab here and connect the final section. Okay, make sure you tuck the long tabs behind the main face of this. Line that up. And press and hold. There we go. Okay, and we can take this and flare it back so we can access this tab. Throw a little bit of glue on there. And just like we did before, line that up with that bottom section and just press it into place. Oops. 
There we go. Fold that back. Grab our next tab. And line that up. And press that into place. Again, you can see here that I'm kind of squishing it, but it's fine. It can handle it. There we go. And finally, where the two sections meet. So what I'd recommend doing here is not only throwing glue on this tab, but also throwing glue on this final tab here and just kind of doing it in one fell swoop. Okay, so we'll bring this over, connect these two tabs together to make this all one seamless piece. Oops, there we go. And then you can take this tab and push it up against the actual surface. There we go. Okay, so there's the pretty little collar. Now the collar itself also has, um, well, it's got this little piece here. Okay, and we have two of these, one for each, each half, I should say. And you'll notice that uh, this last segment here kind of goes up. Okay, and that's because we want it to line up with this little section that's kind of cut. Okay, so just take a, go ahead and put it around, get a feel for what it looks like. And you'll also notice that one of these has a little tab at the end, it's just a tiny little triangle. I wanna make sure that we do that one first. Okay, so I'm actually gonna start on the front, on the very end, I don't typically do it this way, but, we have to, because we want to make sure that this part gets aligned correctly. Okay, so get that lined up. So as we put this piece down, make sure you do not glue the very end of this down. Okay, just start uh, right at this first little hill, or this little hump, and then go ahead and put that down. Okay, this should be just kind of hanging off, but you do want to make sure that um, if you were to glue it down, if you take a look at it while it's flat up against the surface, that it is right up where these two sections meet, okay? With that little piece that's kind of cut and has that little angle, okay? And make sure it's nice and flush with the bottom. There we go. And just hold that in place for just a few moments, let it set. There we go. Now, even if you don't get this perfectly lined up in the center, uh, again, we are gonna be able to do some damage control because we're gonna be putting a bow on that. Okay, and with this, this paper that I'm using, uh, I have to go very thin on the glue here because uh, it's almost, you can see how bouncy it is. Uh, I feel like it's kind of warping it a little bit. So I'm going to go easy on the glue. Okay, and just work your way around. Line that up with the next section. Make sure it's nice and flush with the bottom. Okay, there we go. Looking good. Oops. And it's very easy with the glue here. There we go. Again, make sure it's flush with the bottom. All right, last segment here. This paper is very thin. It's very strong too. It's kind of an interesting combination. All right, last little bit of glue. And then of course, make sure you get a little bit on that little tab at the end. And again, lining it up with the very bottom of the little collar. Oh, I see what it's doing, obviously. There's a... Uh, the embossing is showing through. That's what's happening. Okay. I thought it was glue, but I just realized there's a little swirl there. 
And as I press that down, it's kind of showing through. And that's okay. All right, so you can see how nicely that worked out. Okay, so now we're gonna grab the other half. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put glue on the first section where the little collar is cut. And then there's a little tiny tab there that we also need to put a little bit of glue on. So let's do that. Okay, and as I mentioned earlier, you wanna make sure that you uh, leave this one up. Okay, so that it's not glued down. Let's get this lined up. And then right here where that little tab is, make sure you get that matched up accurately as well. Okay, so that looks good. Nice and flush at the bottom. And now what we can do, I'm just gonna grab a scrap piece of paper and just paint a little bit of glue right on this section here. So throw a little bit of glue on that first piece that we put down. Okay, and then you can pop it right on top of this guy here. And again, you know, it's not the end of the world if it's not perfect, because like I said, there's gonna be a bow covering this up anyway. So it doesn't really matter that much. Okay, so let's pull this back now and we can apply our glue to the rest of this, one section at a time. Again, making sure this stays nice and aligned at the bottom. <clears throat> Pull that back. This is the weirdest feeling paper I've ever worked with. It almost feels like, I don't even know. I don't even know what to, uh, it feels like, a, it almost feels like, um, actually I know what it feels like. It almost feels like that fruit by the foot candy um, because it's not very stiff at all. It's so wobbly and it almost looks like candy. It's kind of weird. Okay, last little section, line it up, make sure it's flush with the bottom and then it should go right on top of that little tab from the other piece. Okay, so there we go, perfect. Did I not get glue on that? There we go, okay. All right, so that is all in place. Perfect. Okay, so you know what, um, just to get it out of the way, let's put our little bow together. We've already done this once. Grab a dowel, um, place it between your finger and the paper, or place the paper between your finger and the dowel. Lift it up 90 degrees, run it through. You can fold the little rectangles just so that you can actually see where the rectangle is, which will help you with the placement of everything. Let's throw a little bit of glue right on that little rectangle, pop it into place. You're just gonna pop it right onto the center where that other little rectangle is in the center and just hold that for a moment. You should be pros at this now. This is your second bow in the video. Okay, other side. Apply the glue on the pattern that is not going to be visible. So whatever the pattern is on the inside. And again, line that up with the center. And all we have left is just the panels for the face uh, and the head, obviously, and that's not too bad. Okay, all right, and just like we did with the first one, I'm gonna take this and pop it right on the center. Make sure it's centered on that little rectangle in the middle. And then just take and fold it over. Fold it behind, okay? And give it a nice firm fold. And then what we're gonna do is just throw a little bit of glue on the very end of one of the sides and pop it in there. Okay. And there we go. Okay, so that's ready to go once we, uh, once we get everything else in place. And you can see where that's, that's gonna go there. You can either hot glue that uh, or whatnot. Um, so finally, we have the panels, okay? And you'll notice that on two of the panels, let me make sure I have these all going the right way here. Okay. So first off, one thing I do wanna mention is that the top is gonna to be a little bit thinner than the bottom. Okay, so it kind of tapers out. It gets wider as you go down. Okay, so that's gonna be the top. The thinner part is the top. And two of these are gonna have a series of markers on them. 
Okay, so there's one and there's the other. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the eyebrows on these just so that we know which one is the left and which one is the right side. Uh, the rest of the facial features we can put on afterwards. Okay, and the eyebrows obviously are gonna go, there's markers right here for the eyebrows. So I can tell right now, based on the markers, um, there's one marker here, it's a little bit longer, and one smaller marker for the tip of the thinner part of the eyebrow. So that's gonna go right there, and that's gonna go right there. Okay, now one other thing too that I wanna do is I'm just gonna train this a little bit. Okay, so I just, holding the panel and running a dowel very gently just to give it a slight curve. You don't wanna overdo it on the curve here. Okay, just like that, just very easy. Okay, so as I was saying, I'm gonna take a look at the little markers on here, and that's gonna help us determine where to put the eyebrows. So you can see on these two panels, there are two little markers. One is larger than the other, and the larger one, obviously, is where you wanna put the larger, the section of the eyebrow that's thicker and just line that up. And then the, the smaller one here, the tip of that is gonna fit right into that little marker. Okay, so we'll do the same thing on both sides. And we're not gonna worry about the rest of the facial features. Again, we're just putting this on right now so that when we put this panel on, we put it on correctly so that the left side of the face is on the left side and vice versa. Okay, so we got the two eyebrows in place, and of course, the eyebrows are gonna go like this, okay? And what we wanna do, remember this is the front because of the little cutaway here. So this one's gonna go here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by gluing it at the top, and then we're gonna throw a little bit of glue and just get it glued to the bottom like that. Okay, so it's pretty simple. You can see that it's, uh, because it's, up against the little collar. It's almost staying in place automatically. And I'm not so worried about putting glue on this part here. We're just gonna do the top and the bottom just to maintain a consistent roundness. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by putting glue just at the top of this panel. And I'm gonna spread that glue out all the way to the very edge. Okay, and again, make sure that this eyebrow is on the right-hand side. Okay, we're gonna push this up against, right up to the fold where this main part starts to go straight up. Make sure it's centered. So just kinda, of, just to get an idea of how it's gonna sit, you can kinda of put it down all the way just to get a visual. And that looks pretty good, looks pretty straight on. Okay, so now once that top part is in place, we can peel this back very gently and just throw a little bit of glue right at the very base of this. And I'm gonna spread that glue out to the very edge. It's nice and tacky, so it should not take long at all to set. And pop that right into place. And just try to butt that up against the collar so that it looks very seamless there at the bottom and just hold that in place. Okay, if you want, you can actually stick your hand inside so that you have something to press against. And there we have it. Okay, so let's just do the other side of the face and let's take a look and see what it's gonna look like here before we actually glue it down. And you can see that that looks pretty seamless the engineering is pretty spot on, okay? And the inking really helps hide the fact that there's a seam there. It almost looks seamless. All right, so again, let's take a little bit of glue right at the top, spread that glue to the very edge, okay? And again, make sure you're putting it just to the left of the first one that we put into place. I'm kind of pushing it up against the surface here that I'm touching with my thumb. Okay, make sure it's nice and centered. There we go, and you can press, perfect. 
and throw the glue on the bottom of the panel now. I kind of spread that all the way to the bottom with my nozzle, so I don't really didn't really have to do it with my finger. Okay, and just press that into place. This part's pretty easy. There we go. Just like that. Okay. And that is looking very nice. Okay. So now the rest of these, it doesn't really matter where they go because they're all the same. Okay. So just pick one and we're going to repeat this process six more times all the way around. Okay. And I don't think I trained these. So I'm just going to train them slightly just to give them a little bit of a curve. Just going to do like a little, uh, assembly line here. Very gentle curve. And there we go. Okay. So let's grab the next one. Again, don't forget that the skinnier part is at the top, the thicker at the bottom. Just want to make sure that we put this on correctly. Okay. And next in line, line it up as closely as you can to the neighboring piece. Press that down, hold it in place. And while you're holding it down, you can apply the glue to the bottom. There we go. Bring it down. I'd stick my hand in there and press and hold. There we go. Very simple. The facial features, I think, are, are what really make this piece what it is. Ron did a, a really good job bringing Frosty to life here. Yep, you can see how awesome that's looking so far. All right, keep on cruising here. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to switch over to this other side here and just kind of go back and forth because I want the I want the front of this to be as precise as possible. And if we kind of go completely clockwise or counterclockwise, um, I think it lends itself to more mistakes as far as the spacing goes. So I'm just going to go back and forth like this. Okay, there we go. You got plenty of room to stick your hand in there if you need to. And let's bring this down, apply the glue to the bottom. Stick your hand in there, bring it down, check your alignment. Perfect. This is the engineering on this is on point as the young kids say, or I don't even know if they say that anymore. I'm kind of dating myself maybe. There we go. Okay. Looking sharp. Well, let's go over here, grab the next one and repeat the same process. And then all we have to do is just put our facial features on, which is pretty straightforward because we have markers for all that and add a couple bows and Frosty is officially alive. Okay. Now this one seems like it's a little bit off, but I'm just going to center it anyway. And this is what I mean. And it could be because of how I assembled the actual structure. So again, it's probably most important to make sure that the face is aligned as accurately as possible. And then as you make your way towards the back, it becomes a little less important. Okay, there we go. And that actually worked out really nice. Okay, so let's head over here, get the next one in place. This thing's looking pretty sharp, if I do say so myself. Okay. Get that one nice and centered. Whoops. Up a little too high. There we go. And again, while that's drying, if you need to kind of nudge it left or right a little bit as you bring it down, check your alignment here and make sure that that it kind of follows that curve. You'll see what I mean. If it, if this starts to kind of overlap 
this piece starts to overlap this piece too much towards the bottom, give it a little bit of a nudge towards you or vice versa, depending on how it's all sitting for you. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So we've got a couple more to go. And yeah, the panels are relatively straightforward to put on, I think. And I would say that the actual assembly of the structures for the hat and the base are not that difficult. We're at this point now where we've got it all together. And if there's one thing to be said about it, again, it's just kind of repetitive, but not hard. But that's, uh, that's the good part of it. it. Gets you into that, that zone mentally where you kind of are just hyper-focused on one thing and the worries of the day just seem to melt away. Okay, last one going in. And there we go. Pop your hand inside there. Give your finger something to press up against so we don't go crushing this thing. And there we go. Okay, let's take a look and see. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay. All right, so let's get the facial features on so we can call it a day. Okay, the eyes are gonna go like this. And again, we do have markers for that as well. So the smaller marker over here, is gonna go right there. And then this guy's gonna go right there. And I don't think you really need to train this. I think as we apply it, it will pretty much curve how it needs to, to sit correctly. And the markers are, are pretty vital, I, I think, because they really help make the face nice and symmetrical and there's really no room for mistakes. So I always try to incorporate little things like that to make life easier for you guys. I can't wait to see your versions of Frosty. Okay, so again, use those markers. Get everything nice and lined up. And again, you can stick your, stick your hand inside. Use those fingers to push, to push the, uh, the eye up against. There we go. I'm gonna do this every single time because he is literally coming to life here. That hat is the bee's knees. <laughs> All right, let's see what else we got here. We have a nose, we have some rosy cheeks. I'm gonna do the cheeks real quick. And we do have uh, markers for the cheeks. Okay, you'll see, let me see here. There's a marker here and there's a marker here. I think there might be one. Yeah, and there's one here on the left as well. So we have three markers to help you with the centering of the cheeks. Okay, and they're gonna go right like that. Now if you want, you could take this and just kind of curl it against a dowel just to give it a little bit of a curve. Okay, let's get our glue on his cheeks. And again, don't forget to use the little markers. They definitely help. There we go. You can stick your hand inside, push up against that. This thing is very solid. Okay. So obviously, uh, with the size of this thing, I'm thinking gift cards, cash, um, maybe like cards that the kids use for like games, you know, like Fortnite, Roblox, um, you know, whatever it is they're into. Obviously, this would be great for jewelry. Um, you know, any, any little gift that would fit into this is a great way to present it. Okay, so there's our cheeks. Uh, we have a nose obviously. 
and it is two layers, so we need to take this red layer, glue it to the top, glue it on top of the white layer. This is that weird paper that I was talking about. That almost feels like fruit by the foot. Okay, line that up as accurately as you can. Now with the nose, um, he's actually gonna go across two of the sections. Okay, now I'm noticing here that I have a little bit of white that's sticking out. Uh, in which case, just to kind of cover that up a little bit, you can always take a little ink pad and just hit the white with the ink pad to make it kind of disappear. There we go, much better. All right, so now we have a marker here and a marker here, and this is just gonna get glued like this, okay? And yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna go across the two sections, so if you want, if you need to, you can kind of bend this a little bit more. Okay, you don't wanna crease it in the center. And then just take a little bit of glue, and I would just focus the glue on the left and right-hand side, since the middle's really not gonna be making contact with anything. Okay, just pop that into place there and here and I would just be very patient with this and hold it in place for just a few moments just to make sure that it sets properly. Okay, just be patient. If you want to stick your hand inside, give it a little bit of, uh, give it a little extra push, there we go. That looks good. Okay, and finally we have his mouth. Um, you know what, one thing I didn't do that I probably should is maybe just hit this, hit the mouth with a little bit of ink since everything else is inked. Uh, by the way, if you've never inked, head over to our site and go into the blog section. We have a, there's an article there called Inking 101. It talks about the supplies that I use, the types of inks, and it shows you some various techniques that I use for inking with this. And I'm gonna branch out soon, hopefully, and try some other types of inks. Um, I've been kind of looking at the Tim Holtz inks where you can kind of blend them. I'm just hitting this a little bit just to dirty it up a bit so it's not so in your face red. I want to make it a little interesting. Okay, same with this. I'm going to take my dowel and I'm just gonna wrap this around the dowel just to kind of give it a little bit of a curve. And then you'll see that we have, uh, let's see, where's that going? Yeah, so the very bottom of this has that little point that's gonna go right there. And then you got the same little point on the other side and that should fit in there like that, okay? And again, I would just focus the glue on the two sides since the middle is somewhat just kind of hovering in place. And that should be more than fine. Okay, line that up. I don't know how the heck she does this as far as the engineering goes on this. But I'm glad she does. When I say she, I mean Diana. Um, that turned out, that is spot on. Okay, just hold that in place for a few extra seconds. And there we go, okay. So there is Frosty. And of course, you need to finish this off with a little bow. Um, hot glue would work. I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna use a pop dot for now, just to speed things up. And I'll throw a little pop dot on the back there. And that's gonna go right on the center part. Remember I mentioned that if things don't go according to plan, it's okay because we're gonna be covering this up with a little bow, just like that, okay? So that's it, guys. Uh, don't forget, again, to put um, some little rhinestones here where the pearls go. Uh, and then what else? Maybe something here to finish off the bow. Well, so that's gonna do it for Mr. Frosty here. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please visit us on our YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button. There's also a little bell that helps you get notifications anytime we release a new video. And if you make this or anything from our new bundle, I'd love to see it, and so would the rest of our almost 40,000 members. 
So head over to your Facebook and do a search for Dreaming Tree Official. You can join myself and uh, again, almost 40,000 other dreamers that inspire us daily. So um, happy or Merry Christmas crafting. <laughs> and as always, I look forward to crafting with you again. Hey, thanks for crafting along with me. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out some of our other videos and also please consider hitting that subscribe button. And don't forget to visit our site and check out our free SVG section where we have over 140 free SVG files complete with assembly videos. I look forward to crafting with you soon.